When it comes to engine reliability and performance, an area that enthusiasts often don't give too much thought to is the filtration of the fuel. Now obviously if your fuel system becomes blocked with debris or contaminants, this could result in a lean out where the fuel isn't reaching the injectors and that's the last thing you want, particularly when your engine's making a huge amount of power, it's probably not going to last very long. So we're here to talk to Tony Palo from Injected Dynamics about Injected Dynamics brand new IDF 750 fuel filter system. So Tony, this is a pretty unique looking product, it's like no other fuel filter I've seen before and there's a lot of features on it that I want to talk about. The first is that it is fully serviceable, so uh, can you tell us how exactly that works? How do you remove and replace that fuel filter element? Uh, we try to make it as easy as you can. Um, we've got a Schrader valve that you can use to bleed the fuel pressure down uh, so you don't make a mess when you when you crack it loose. Uh, there's a spin-off can so all you do is unscrew the bottom. Most places that you have it mounted, that could be done really easy with no tools. Uh, there's a safety latch to ensure that if it does come loose, it can't leak and fall off. Uh, you unscrew the can, pop the filter element off, pop the new one on, screw it back on. I just want to talk a little bit about that uh, safety latch because that is a really nice feature there. As you've said, you don't need any tools to actually undo and replace the filter element, but you've got that safety valve there, so that's spring-loaded, so uh, all you need to do is actually use one hand and press that safety clip in, and then you can unscrew it. Yep, push, it, push the safety latch in with your thumb, unscrew the thing, you're done. As you go back on, you'll hear the positive click to know that it's, it's back on, and uh, you just hand tight. Now, you also mentioned that Schrader valve there, so if you've got a fuel system with a check valve or a one-way valve in the system, as a, a lot of systems do have, that's going to build pressure in the system even when the engine isn't running. So uh, conventionally, if you undid your fuel filter, as you've mentioned, it's going to make a mess. You're going to end up with fuel spraying everywhere, and obviously uh, dangerous potentially as well. So uh, how's, how do you use that Schrader valve to bleed off the pressure? Yeah, so in the past we would crack a fuel line or do whatever and kind of makes a mess. Uh, so we, we supply a thread-on hose barb for the Schrader valve, and you'll put a hose on that, run it to a bucket or whatever, uh, and as you thread on the barb on the Schrader valve, uh, the first thing that happens is an O-ring contacts the Schrader valve and seals that, and then as you continue spinning, it depresses the Schrader valve and comes right out. So uh, you don't even touch fuel. Another feature which I think is unique as far as I'm concerned, I haven't seen anything like it, is the differential pressure gauge that's built into the filter housing. So this is a, a problem with a lot of fuel systems. Uh, we don't necessarily know when the filter element has become blocked, there's no indication. So uh, quite often we'll be replacing a filter element that's well past its use by date and has resulted in a flow drop or a pressure drop in the system that we're not maybe aware of and other times of course we're needlessly replacing fuel filters. So just explain to us what that differential pressure uh, gauge actually does and how we can use that. Yeah, so as the filter starts to get too much contaminant in it, uh, there's a pressure drop across the filter. Um, you know, there's always going to be one or two PSI maybe. Uh, at five PSI pressure drop across the filter, our indicator moves over to let you know that it's time to change the element. Uh, all you have to do, the engine doesn't even have to be running. The fuel pump needs to be on at full flow, uh, which is gonna happen with the lowest pressure, so you don't wanna check it in boost, you wanna check it at idle, that's gonna be the best case. Um, and if it moves over, you change the element, if you, know, you can see, it goes from zero to five PSI pretty much, so you can even see as it's getting there. Um, and you end up doing it uh, before you're changing your engine out because the filter was clogged. It's a cheap way of protecting potentially a very expensive engine. I also want to talk about the actual filter elements. There's a, a lot of confusion I think in the market about uh, what material the elements should be made of. Obviously we're seeing a lot of different fuels now, pump gasoline, ethanol based fuels, methanol and uh, a lot of race gas. Uh, and what sort of micron ratings these filters come out with, uh, what, what can you tell us about that? How do, how do Injector Dynamics deal with the filter element situation? Uh, there's certainly a lot of misinformation in that regard. Uh, we've all heard the 10 micron, 15, 20, whatever. Uh, but that number, uh, without an efficiency rating, is more or less useless. So uh, Bosch's spec on filtration for an EV14 injector is that the filter needs to be 87% efficient at 5 micron and 100% efficient at 35 micron. Um, our filter meets those specs and it's compatible with all fuels. So you really know that regardless what you're putting through this, the filter is going to do its job and obviously Bosch put out a fairly high standard for their injectors so you're going to be meeting that, making sure the whole fuel system is up to task.
Uh, another aspect with the uh, fuel filter system you've got is you've got these blocks that uh, you can add into the system as an option, uh, particularly if you want to adapt in a fuel pressure or a fuel pressure and temperature sensor. Uh, when you're plumbing your whole fuel system out in AN fittings, this can be a little bit difficult. So tell us how these blocks work. Yeah, you know, finding a place for a pressure sensor uh, is one thing, finding a place for a pressure and a temperature sensor, you always end up with some crazy contraption of fittings and hoses. Um, so this makes it easy. Uh, at the end of the filter, it's a dash eight female O-ring boss thread. Um, you can put your fitting straight in there if you don't need the pressure sensor, or the add-on block adds about 25 millimeters of, of thickness there, and it just stacks on and bolts on, has a Bosch Motorsport combination pressure and temperature sensor on the bottom of it, and then your dash eight fitting goes right in the end of that. So even if you decide, I don't need that, and down the road you want to add it, odds are you could just add it, you're not going to have to change any plumbing or anything. It certainly simplifies the whole installation. Uh, also, the flow rating of the, uh, the fil filter, can you tell us how much fuel that can actually support, how much fuel flow it can support? Uh, so we call it the ID F750. Uh, that's a rating of 750 liters per hour, and it'll accept a reasonable contaminant load uh, before needing service. The more flow you have, uh, the less contaminant load it will take to make that 5 PSI pressure differential. Uh, on the website, we have a chart that shows all of this. Uh, you've got flow versus contaminant load uh, versus uh, pressure drop. So you can get an ID and see. You could run it at 1,000 liters per hour. It's going to need service a little more often. But in the end, how often it needs service depends on how dirty your fuel is. So there's not really a, a, a set time or number. Look, as usual, it's the sort of engineering uh, that we would expect to see from Injected Dynamics, a great looking product and uh, I'm sure it's going to be uh, a welcome addition to the market. If people want to find out more about that product and purchase, how should they get in touch? Uh, InjectorDynamics.com, you can find out anything you want to know about it. We have a full technical manual on there with all of the, the, the good details that we like um, and all of our dealers are listed on the website. Give any of them a call, they'll have them. Awesome, thanks for the chat, Tony. Yep, thank you. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning and you'll also have the chance to ask questions which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.